It's been a big year for fabric data warehousing. Learn everything that was shipped, dive a little deeper, and see what's coming next. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome back to Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Tino from the Fabric Data Warehouse team. Uh, Tino, thanks so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Anne. And uh, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, we're recording this right before Christmas, so really exciting. We uh, got my holiday cheer on. So um, uh, yeah, I just joined uh, Microsoft in May, actually, right? But I'm a relative newcomer, um, and I came from both Little Tech. I was a co-founder of a startup called Mother Duck. Which, um, we, we were also a data warehousing company, lots of duck memes and jokes and things like that. But I was also um, in the big tech before. I was at Google for almost a decade working on Google BigQuery. Um, and I'm just super excited to be here at Microsoft for a couple of reasons. One, it's really amazing culture here, fantastic leadership all around, great people. Um, and But uh, you know what's really, really interesting as well is um, the fact that this product that I'm you know, I'm in charge of it now. Is just has is very very promising, right? It's got a fantastic architecture. It's got a really strong bone, so to speak, um, and it's also a relatively new product, right? It went general availability just a little over two years ago. So there's a lot of promise. There's not a lot of like debt that we have to unbear ourselves from. We're kind of starting from scratch, and that's really really exciting. And awesome, cool. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And I think we're all excited to learn what's new in fabric data warehousing this year. But yeah, I'd love to, you know, let's take a look back on the year and, and how did it go? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I'm in a really feel like a, can, a kid in a candy shop because of how awesome this product is. Um, and, you know, kind of like the customers are speaking um, with their own feet, so to speak. Um, we're exhibiting some really fantastic growth, right? We're not a, we're not a tiny business, but we're growing by uh, you know by three hundred percent, four four x over a year ago, which is really really phenomenal numbers, right? Um, and you can't really do that in infrastructure and databases without having a fantastic product. So thanks to all of our great customers for this. Awesome, that's great. That's great to see. And and you don't do it by standing still either. I understand you guys have shipped a lot of things this year. Yes, yes, of, of course. And I think this is just kind of like a, a sampling of all the things that we shipped. And you can see there on the URL on the bottom right um, what we've shipped so far and the roadmap for what's coming up. Um, but really, I think um, I must say that it's not just about features. It's not just about giving you new buttons to click. Um, a huge percentage of what the organization does happens behind the scenes, underneath the hood. Um, and it all comes down to better performance, better security, um, better stability, um, just overall higher quality of the product. Um, that will always continue to be a, a major investment area for us. So um, I just want to kind of like give credit to the, the unsung heroes who's a huge percentage of our work who are not necessarily represented on this list, um, but they're really making a huge difference in, uh, in the quality of our product. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things here and obviously a lot of stuff behind the scenes as well. Like, are there any things that really stand out to you or things you think we should dive into a little bit deeper? Yeah, I, I want to call out just a couple of uh, really interesting, to me, features that, that we've shipped uh, over the year. Um, and uh, uh, I think a lot of this is just really, really useful to our customers. So clustering actually um, just went um, a public preview at Ignite in the middle of November. Um, and this, if you haven't seen this feature, it's really amazing, right? You, you can apply a clustering index on top of your data um, that really greatly accelerates all kinds of different uh, queries. For example, scans, filters, but even aggregations and things like that. So um, really, really awesome feature. Please go and try it today. It's available to everyone. Um, and our customers are saying really awesome things about it already. Wow. And for this to, to use it, like I basically just update the way that I'm using an index or how would I you know, take advantage of this? Yeah, you just create a clustering index on your table um, and uh, off you go, right? Uh, it's as simple as that. Very easy to use. Um, and actually, you know, um, when you think about it, but when queries are faster and they're more efficient, they're also cheaper as well. So it's yeah. a, just overall yeah. awesome tool. Everybody wins. That, that's great. Okay, cool. So what what else has been going on? Well, I got a couple of features that are um, even, even a little bit more um, nerdy than uh, clustering. Um, identity column. I'm pointing this one out because 
we, we're just seeing this as a very, very important feature for all of the, the data engineers and database administrators um, that have been just asking for this feature. So, um, and identity column is essentially a type of column you can set on your table that automatically increments um, uh, kind of like a, the, like a index of, of your uh, data. It helps quite a bit in like classic data warehouses scenarios. And it helps quite a bit for people coming from SQL Server, SQL DB backgrounds, or Azure Synapse backgrounds. So that's definitely a, like we're getting a lot of really good feedback on this one. Awesome. Yeah, I, I would think like while you say nerdy, like it's things <laughs> like this that get you an applause in a room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened um, with clustering and with identity columns. There was applause when we um, uh, announced these features on stage. Um, but let me show you the next feature because there was definitely huge applause when I, I stood in front of several thousand people in, a, in Vienna during our Fabcon conference in September. And I said, merge is now available. And people were just kind of, you know, people went wild. It was amazing. So merge is a really, really useful feature. It's in public preview. It's going to go GA in a couple of months as well, right? That kind of combines all of the different things in, which, in, in how you can edit data, right? So again, like insert, update, and delete, combines them all into a single statement. So it makes it just so much easier to transform and manage your data uh, with SQL. Cool. That's exciting. I'll have to learn more about this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. I, I want to say that this is a fairly standard um, uh, type of capability. Um, and Fabric Data Warehouse is a newer product, right? Like I mentioned, we went GA less than two years ago. So um, it's just uh, uh, you know the fact that we're uh, we're meeting where customers are um, is awesome. is encouraging. Um, let good. me tell you a little bit more about um, something that is going to actually help customers who are. Um, on a different system, something that, that really helps um, folks who are on a different system that uh, to, to kind of uh, onboard onto Fabric Data Warehouse, to migrate Fabric Data Warehouse. So we built this really awesome tool. We're calling it Migration Assistant. And it also went general availability a couple of months ago. Uh, well, the Migration Assistant allows folks who are running Azure Synapse or uh, uh, SQL Server or SQL DB um, to evaluate um, how easy would it be for them to migrate to Fabric Data Warehouse, right? Are the data types compatible? Are the capabilities compatible? Um, so it does this assessment, first of all, and then it actually helps you do the translation and the data of movement. So it's, it's a free tool. It's available just in the Fabric UI. Anyone can go and try and use it. Um, and it just kind of really jump starts your kind of modernization journey, right? You don't have to start from scratch when you're moving into Fabric Data Warehouse. This gets you pretty far down that journey. Awesome. That's great. I'm, I'm sure this is a highly requested feature, and I understand why. Very much so. Very much so. And I want to say the, the last bit that I want to highlight out of all the awesome things that we've uh, uh, worked on this year is all the different security features that we've been focused on. So obviously, security is the, always in the number one priority of Microsoft. Um, and we're doing a lot of things kind of like underneath the, the, the water, right, uh, in the iceberg that are really necessary to have a very secure and trusted uh, platform. Uh, but these are things that allow our customers to uh, be better tools to secure their own environments. So private link, which is kind of like setting up a VPN a perimeter around your um, your environment. Customer ma managed encryption keys allows you to bring your own keys um, into your environment and manage them yourselves, rotate them, delete them if you want. Um, instead of us managing the encryption keys for you. And then exfiltration controls allows our customers to prevent um, uh, folks from reaching the, uh, the internet from their environment, right? So these were all kind of tools that, um, uh, capabilities that customers really, really wanted and really needed to, uh, in order to be able to adopt fabric in specific environments. Um, so we've kind of checked those boxes off um, and, uh, and we're, yeah, we're excited to, to see customers embrace these features. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I am feeling the excitement from you, from all the different things that the team has been doing and and not just things, but impactful things that impact the, the things that folks are doing their day to day. And so it kind of leaves me with this last question. I don't know how much you can share with us, but <laughs> anything you want to tell us about what's planned for 2026 in Fabric Data Warehousing? Yes, um, I would love to share. And again, on our roadmap, there is a, a glimpse there. Uh, from a high level, I think, um, I already mentioned that security is incredibly paramount for us, but everything we do um, is 
uh, needs to have a really high bar of quality. So just overall quality of our product is a, is a really the overarching theme uh, for this year and, and moving forward, right? Um, we want beautiful user experiences. We want smooth um, uh, end-to-end uh, journeys. We want our customers to be delighted when they use our product and not frustrated. So we're working on um, kind of like, you know, making things faster, more reliable, um, less bugs, like all that kind of like that work um, is is happening as we speak. So that's kind of the o- overarching theme. The other is we're always focused on performance. We're always making things faster, cheaper, um, better for you. Um, so uh, the next time you push a button, um, your queries should just be faster. And we have a lot of really interesting investments, um, a lot of really interesting announcements this year um, coming up on that. Uh, but related to that is um, uh, how our customers are able to manage their environments within Fabric Data Warehouse. So performance a lot of times is about how much do you want to pay, right? If you want things to be faster, you you might want to pay more, right? So we want to give our customers these tools to be able to decide. Uh, this is the classic workload management and data warehousing. We want our customers to be able to decide whether for some parts of their workloads, they want the best performance possible, right? So they twist that knob in one direction. Or maybe they want to save a lot of money, so they twist that knob with the other direction. And they want to be able to do that at the high level of granularity. So that's another really, really major uh, part of our story. Um, and overall, I think uh, we're seeing that our product is maturing. So there's less of less of these um, gaps that folks from um, legacy systems have uh, told us they need. Um, so we're just kind of shifting gears more into um, like some really cool, really innovative stuff that uh, I'll be able to share with you next year. Awesome. Cool. Well, we will hold you to that uh, <laughs> as the, the year progresses. You know, um, to, to viewers, if you tuned in uh, and you like this episode, go ahead and leave it a like, leave us a comment to let us know what your favorite thing from 2025 was. Uh, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Uh, Tino, thanks again so much for being on the show. Um, and to our viewers, we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Amazing. Thank you so much, Anne.